There's a special kind of pride That you feel deep down inside A strength that seems to thrive In Lima, Allen County The American way of life To get in gear and do what's right An unbreakable forthright link Called Real American Strength Lima, Allen County Real American Strength Without forgetting where we've been Creativity meets technology Where possibilities never end Ohio strong, Midwestern Ohio Exploring innovative ideas Deep rooted but always growing Ever proud of where we live By my Allen County Real American strength Community Focus on GTV2 Lima. Thanks for joining us today on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. This is 4-H Week, and here in the studio to tell us all about the benefits of 4-H is Leanna McKamey. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me today. You are going out in the schools over the next few weeks signing kids up for 4-H. What are the benefits? Um, the 4-H program, it's OSU Extension Program. And um, it's youth-oriented. It's about um, learning by doing. The, uh, the kids that join 4-H will get to join a club. They'll get to be with kids their age, learning something new and um, having a good time at the same time. And what ages are you targeting? 4-H starts at age 5 in the Cloverbud program. And then in third grade, it's a traditional 4-H program where they'll take a project that they're interested in, learn about it during their club meetings. and. Then they get to, in July, if it's a non-livestock project, they'll get to go and be judged and tell someone what all they've learned. And then they'll get to display it at the county fair. Well, and I think we need to stress that fact that there are non-livestock projects. You don't need a cow to join 4-H. Absolutely. Um, I think everybody thinks, oh, 4-H, they think the cow, they think a pig. Um, but there's over 200 projects in 4-H. So if you're interested in robotics, archery, uh, photography, food nutrition, there's so many different things out there. If you have an interest, we have a project you can take. No kidding, and other kids who are interested in the same thing and advisors to help them learn it, correct? Correct, there, we have over 200 wonderful volunteers here in the county and they help out. We have a thousand kids that are in 4-H at this time and we're always learn, um, hoping to grow and get bigger. So if, um, if the kids out there, if the parents have kids who may be interested, how do they sign up? What kind of time commitment is it? How does it work? Sure, they can go to our website, it's allen.o osu.edu and there's information on there. Um, like I said before, we'll be going, in, be going into the schools into the third grade classrooms and we'll be handing out a pamphlet. It talks about 4-H and it has phone numbers. Um, my phone number is 419-879-9108. They can call me and we can set them up with the right club that fits what they're interested in. Is it weekly meetings? Um, it depends on the club. Some meet twice a, twice a month, some uh, meet more than that. So it depends on what type of project you're taking. Um, you have some clubs that meet every week. And then does it just run through the summer and end? Most clubs are starting up now, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll be starting up here in March, and they'll run till September. But we do have some clubs that run all year long. And again, it just depends on what the project is, who the kids are, and what they want out of correct, it. Correct, correct. And we have so many other interesting things. There's 4-H camp. Every kid loves to get away for five days, um, go swimming, have fun, uh, learn how to make crafts, and just make new friends. We go to Camp Palmer with Van Wert County, so it's Allen County and Van Wert kids just having a great time. It does sound like fun. When do kids need to sign up for this year's 4-H? Um, we, have, we have some time. Uh, May 1st is the deadline. So you have a couple of months to sign up, but as I said, most of the clubs are forming now. So this is a good March. We're going and getting ready to go into March, and so that'll be a great time to sign up. Is there any kind of a fee for 4-H? Um, it depends on the project. There is no fee to join 4-H. It's free um, to every kid. But then there are costs that you might, if you're going to make a craft, if you're going to do photography, you'll need to print your photos and that type of thing. You're, giving a bo you're given a book that we supply you, and that gives you instructions for your project. And it really is a learning experience, because the kids aren't just out there taking pictures. They're expected to learn how to do it properly and then report on what they've learned. Right, and one of the things um, that people think, oh, I'm just going to learn about this 
learn about photography. But then you get to learn how to talk to people. You learn lifelong skills. Um, it teaches um, kids how to do things as they get older. We have a lot of kids that are going off to college this year that credit 4-H for all that they've learned. How stable is 4-H in our community? I know we had funding issues a couple years ago. We, we did have funding issues. We were very fortunate this year. The county commissioners did, did give us some funding. Um, that money with matching money from state and federal, we will be getting a new 4-H educator in the county, but we are privately funded um, for my position and for other um, activities that we do here in 4-H. And it is a community-wide type of organization where people do support it because they know the importance of 4-H. We have wonderful community uh, businesses and individuals who have given a lot of money to the program. Okay, Leanne, if people do want more information, what is the website again? It's allen.osu.edu. Okay, and they can call you at? 419-879-9108. Okay, and if you have a third grader in any of the schools in the county, you can expect some information to be brought home. That's correct. Okay, thank you for coming in today. Thank you. You're welcome. Leanna McCamey from 4-H. When we come back, we'll get an update on what's happening in the Lima City Parks right after this on GTV2. If you have the chance, will you help save the life of one of our nation's veterans, someone you know? I'm Deborah Norville. If you're the mother, sister, spouse, or friend of a veteran who seems angry, sad, or isolated, you may be seeing warning signs of depression or suicide. Some of these warning signs can be that the veteran seems disconnected from family or friends, starts to give away prized possessions, displays anger or rage, or overreacts to problems. The VA is reaching out to help, so please reach back. If your loved one is a veteran, and if you even think you see these warning signs, call 1-800-273-TALK and press 1. That's 1-800-273-TALK and press 1. Don't second guess yourself. Reach out for help. A message from St. Rita's and the Komen Foundation. Most breast cancer is found in women with no family history of the disease. Make sure you get a mammogram every year. Schedule yours today. this hard? It's no wonder 7,000 students drop out every school day. Visit BoostUp.org and help kids in your community stay in school. Welcome back to Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. You know the seasons are changing when the sports change. Here in the studio to talk about everything going on in the Lima City Parks is Parks Director Rick Stolle. It's great to be here, Ann. Well, Thanks for having you. us in and uh, talk about some of the great things. That, uh, it's been an interesting winter. Um, but uh, yesterday we wrapped up our uh, youth boys and girls basketball program. Uh, we had uh, 60 some teams be in between boys and girls third through sixth grade. Third and fourth played together, fifth and sixth played together. So we had two different, really four different divisions when you consider the boys and the girls. So what um, we did yesterday is wrapped up the fifth and sixth grade tournament. Um, we had uh, roughly 40 some teams in the tournament and through the process over a week and a half, two weeks, brought it together and we uh, crowned two champions yesterday, a girls division champion and a, and a boys division champion. It was just a terrific league. Uh, it's the first time as we spoke earlier, we've expanded the league uh, to the teams that we have now, which include Spencerville and Delphus and Bath and Elida, Shawnee, Lima City and Lima Catholic Schools, uh, Temple Christian. It's, it's just it's been a great experience. Kids get to meet and be around kids from other other schools and uh, the different venues we were able to use. So uh, that that process, which you know was really quite an undertaking for a, a eight, seven or eight different entities coming together to the table to organize this thing, and um, we were a big part in that. And just just very very happy and very proud of the people who made it all work. And so. We, uh, we moved past that yesterday, and now we start looking for the next season. Which is? Baseball and softball. <laughs> it and just never stops. It, it doesn't. And, you know, it, we had uh, 
we've, all, we've had great experiences with, with baseball and softball the last few years. Matter of fact, what we modeled our basketball setup um, after. So um, that registration takes place here in the next couple of weeks throughout the city and, 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 and the community. And you'll be sending stuff home with the kids in yes, the schools? Yes, we'll get out and we'll visit the schools um, during their lunch times, and um, we'll leave uh, papers as well, but we'll talk to the kids. And then we'll also uh, have registration forms in our office um, at 900 South College, so people come in and pick those up, fill out the form, and that'll get them registered, and we'll start putting the teams together here in the latter part of uh, March, and then we will um, start the, the schedule. Um, they'll, they'll get their teams, and, and they'll start practicing in April, and the, and the season will begin May 14th, and uh, run up to about the 4th of July. So. And what it's, ages are you looking for? Again, these are second, or excuse me, third and fourth grade boys and girls. Okay. And fifth and sixth grade boys so and girls. So it's the exact again. same kids same, you're targeting. Right. Okay. Same age groups. And um, it's it's really a great league. Uh, we use all the diamonds at Froat and, and, and some of the surrounding areas in Bath and Shawnee and Elida and, and uh, Spencerville. So it is, it's really a great league, again, that gets it kind of wraps up the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. And with school winning for a lot of kids, right there at the uh, Memorial Day weekend break. Um, they'll have two weeks of baseball before school gets out, so it's really kind of nice. The weather starts to churn, and, and it stays a little bit lighter, and you play those ball games on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Monday and Wednesday, depending on the age group, and it really is a, a great way to end the school year. Is there an entry fee for this? Yes, it's uh, 30, $30 for the city uh, kids to get involved in the program, and that gets them a uniform and uh, all the games, and plus a postseason tournament. Perfectly so, reasonable. Oh, it is. It's We play about uh, 10. Every, every group is, is uh, guaranteed 10 or 11 games, depending on their age group. Uh, so, um, you know, it could be more, depending on how well they do in the tournament. <laughs> so. so they just call you or they yes. stop by your office? Yes, stop by our office at <clears throat> 900 South Collet or give us a call, and uh, we'll get the information formed together and plus like I said we'll be out to the schools in the next couple of weeks to hand the forms to the kids so parents start looking for those to come home <laughs> and if you don't see it in a couple of weeks ask them because it's probably somewhere in that book bag somewhere. Well so. if, if mom and dad have older kids you've got a job for them this summer. <laughs> yeah. Well I know with my kids it's like did you get did you get this oh yeah yeah it, it's in it's in there buried. and, and, and oh, when was it due it was yesterday so you know it's it, we all experience those situations, but uh, mm -hmm. you know we uh, we try to remind folks through our, our different media sources to let them know that those forms will be coming home. So. Wonderful. And for the older kids, you have some summer jobs. We do. We like to remind folks, uh, especially as you start looking towards the summer months. We we last time we were here, we talked about it, and we got got a great response. Um, we still have some positions to fill at the pool, uh, some positions in our playground program, uh, our summer maintenance uh, with the parks and so forth. So, uh, you know, we encourage people to stop in, get an application, get it filled out, and we'll get it processed and we will uh, start to finalize the... Um, the interview process, getting setting up dates and so forth for people to come in and sit down with us uh, in the latter part of March so that um, in April we are finalizing it and getting everyone in tune so they know they have a, a summer job for those kids away at college. They can go online and get a form or they can have someone here in town stop by our office and pick one up and fill it out and get it back to us. Uh, but there's still time and you know, we, we always look for, for quality people to run quality programs, and, and that, that's just a win-win for this community and, and our programs. And it is truly a great resume filler for, um, for a lot of college and, 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 uh, and seniors in high schools. They get ready to head off to college. So it truly is a, a great experience to work with kids in these programs and uh, get to understand the, the value of developing you know, that, that uh, mentorship. Well, and besides, it's fun. You're getting paid to go oh, out and play. It is. It is. It, you know, there are challenging days, as we all know, but it truly is a great way to spend a summer, eight, nine weeks of the summer, uh, around kids and, and in programs that have always been successful, and we just want to continue to raise the raise the level of, uh, or the bar, rather, for, for those experiences. Usually this time of the year when I talk to you, we're talking about winter cleanup in the parks and getting ready, but it's been so warm. Are you guys, like, ready to go already? Well, we, through the budget process this year, we, I, I lost our three C&M 
uh, construction maintenance guys over to the streets department. Um, and so we're going to be a little bit behind coming out of the gate, I'm afraid. Um, um, you know, we haven't had the luxury of having those guys in building picnic tables and uh, maintaining mowers and other equipment and getting out on days like today where it's going to be 45 and getting in and doing some of those park spruce ups and, and doing some of the aeration of, of the fields. And we probably wouldn't be start doing that until the next week or two, but it's, it's getting close. And uh, they'll be back here um, in the middle of March, but it's going to put us a little bit behind the gun. It's going to be a very, very challenging spring for us, and depending on what Mother Nature has in store as well. And, and you know as well as I do, man, when the weather turns and it gets into the 50s and it's sunny and all of a sudden people say, well, let's go to the park. It should be just like we left it last <laughs> Last fall, it was uh, the beautiful colors and the grass was, you know, just, you know, that nice, uh, still a little bit of green in it. And, and all of a sudden they get in there, whoa, what, what happened? Well, you know, we got restrooms to open, you know, for people to, to, to access. And, and we got things to do with our with our ponds. And, and, of course, once the weather warms up, we'll be mowing like crazy. So it's like that every spring this year. It's going to be a real challenge for us. But as I told our our people, we're going to do the best we can with the resources we have. And again, that's always been our, our mission and, and, and vision for the department is go out and do the best we can with what we've got. So Lima has always had wonderful parks and we do trust you to keep them in good shape for us. Well, we, you know, we do the best we can and we're going to continue to do that. that. That's for sure. Great. Rick, if people want more information about the baseball program or summer jobs or anything else? You can give us a call at 221-5195. Uh, we're open 8 to 5 or stop in and visit us. We'd love to see you at 900 South Collett. Uh, here in Lima, just south of the tennis courts. Okay, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having us, in, and thanks for all you do for us. You're we really welcome. appreciate it. Rick Stolle from Lima's Parks Department. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2.